Hey everyone, ready to really level up your English speaking skills? Let's do it. We're diving deep into this episode that's absolutely jam-packed with tips. 31 to be exact. 31. Wow, that's a lot. It is. So our mission today is to break those down and really find those golden nuggets. Yeah, find those things that'll give you the fastest path to fluency. And help you speak with more confidence. Exactly. All right, so the episode starts strong with the fundamentals. Yeah. Really stressing daily exposure. Right. Just 10 minutes of reading, 10 minutes of listening. It doesn't sound like much. No, not at all. Yeah. But the episode claims it can make a world of difference. It really can. So tell me, from your experience, is that true? Oh, absolutely. It all boils down to consistency. Okay. It's like, think about playing the piano. Uh. Would you rather practice for like an hour once a month or 15 minutes every day? Every day, for sure. Exactly. It's the same with language. Makes sense. Those small bits, they add up. Yeah. And you build fluency over time. Okay. So consistency is key. The episode also mentions learning 10 new words every day. Oh, wow. Yeah. And I did the math. And that's over 3,000 words in a year. That's amazing. What kind of impact would that have on someone's ability to actually speak English? Well, think about it. You'd be able to understand Mm. and participate in conversations that you just couldn't before. Wow. Imagine being able to like easily order food at a restaurant, confidently ask for directions, or even have a deeper conversation. Oh, that's awesome. With a colleague or a friend. Expanding your vocabulary just opens up so many doors. It really does, yeah, I love that. Yeah. All right, so next, the episode tackles something I think we all struggle with. Oh, yeah. Fear of making mistakes. It's so common. Right. But honestly, it's totally natural to feel that way. Yeah. But here's the thing. Mistakes, they're not failures. Okay. They're actually proof that you're pushing yourself well, and you're learning. Okay. Even native speakers make mistakes sometimes. Oh, I know. I've heard you make a few. Oh, I'm sure you have. But that's a good point. Mistakes are proof that we're learning. They are. So the episode goes on to say that the more we immerse ourselves in English, yeah. the more our brains kind of pick up on the patterns and uh-huh. the nuances of the language. And that helps us understand and speak more easily. Yeah. Does that sound right to you? Absolutely. It's like learning how to swim. Okay. At first, you're hesitant. You know, you're splashing around in the shallow end. Yeah. But the more you practice, Mm -hmm. the more comfortable you get. And eventually, you're out there. Right. Venturing into those deeper waters. I like that, yeah. Immersion just provides that consistent practice. Yeah. Let's your brain absorb the language organically. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, so the episode then gives us some practical tips. Yes. For actually improving spoken English. Mm -hmm. And the biggest thing they emphasize is keeping it simple. Yeah. Focus on input and practice. Exactly. That makes sense. It really does. It's the cornerstone of learning any skill. Right. It is. Think about athletes training for a big game. Yeah. They spend countless hours practicing, refining their technique, and building up their stamina. Right. It's the same with language. Okay. You need consistent input from listening and reading. Yeah. And then you have to put that input into practice. Right, by speaking and writing. Exactly. So it's not just about passively consuming English. No. But actively using it. It is. One technique that caught my eye was simultaneous repetition. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Have you ever tried that? Oh, it's fantastic, especially for pronunciation and fluency. Okay. You listen to a native speaker and you repeat what they say. At the same time. At the same time. Wow. It's like shadowing a master chef in the kitchen. Oh, I like that. You watch their every move. Uh You try to replicate their techniques. Yeah. And then gradually you develop your own skills. That's a great analogy. Thank you. Okay, so the episode also suggests talking to yourself in English. Now, I know that might sound a little crazy at first. It might sound a little strange, yeah. but it's actually super effective okay. for practicing fluency right. in a safe and judgment-free environment. Yes. No one can hear you. Exactly. You can describe your day. Yes. Narrate what you're doing. You can even have imaginary conversations. It's brilliant for getting comfortable with the sounds of the language. It is. And building up your confidence. Exactly. It's all about creating opportunities to actually use the language. Actually use it. And the more you do that, the more natural your spoken English is going to become. I love it. Yeah. All right. So we've got daily exposure, embracing mistakes, Mm -hmm. and active practice. Yes. 
Now let's talk about building vocabulary. Okay. I love this idea from the episode of creating a personal dictionary. It's a great idea. Like a treasure chest yes. of all your new words. It's like taking ownership of your learning and creating a tangible record of your progress. I love that. Every new word is like a gem. Yes. To add to your collection. Okay, I love that analogy. Yeah. The episode also recommends writing every day in English. Yes. Even if it's just like short journal entries or descriptions of things. <laughs> it's so beneficial. Why is that so helpful? Well, writing forces you to recall uh -huh. and use the vocabulary you've learned. Okay. And it also helps you see where the gaps are. Oh. You might find yourself thinking, oh, I don't actually know how to say this in English. And then you can use your personal dictionary. And that's where your dictionary comes in. I see. Yeah. So it's a tool for not just recording new words, mm -hmm. but actually using them. It is. And integrating them. Exactly. Into your everyday language. Yes. And the act of writing itself helps solidify those words oh, wow. in your memory. So you can recall them more easily. More easily when you need them. That's awesome. It is. The episode also gives this cool tip about memorizing short dialogue. Oh, yeah. I never thought about that before, but it makes so much sense. It does. Yeah. It's a fantastic strategy, especially for common scenarios. Oh, like what? Like ordering a coffee, asking for directions, making small talk. Oh, yeah, yeah. Having those ready-to-go phrases can really boost your confidence uh -huh. and help you navigate those situations smoothly. It makes you feel more prepared. It does. I can imagine. Yes. I'm already thinking about some phrases I could start practicing. Yeah, like what? Can I get a latte with oat milk, please? There you go. You're already learning. Yeah. That's the spirit. I'm putting it into practice. It's about finding those creative ways yes. to integrate language learning into your life. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so we've got the basics. Yeah. Uh -huh. Active practice. Yeah. And vocabulary building. Yes. How about we move into immersion? Okay, let's do it. The episode mentions some classic techniques. Right. Like watching TV and movies in English. Oh yeah, it's tried and true, yeah. and for good reason. When you immerse yourself in English that way, mm -hmm. you're exposed to natural language yeah. in context. Oh, okay. You hear different accents. Right. You learn colloquialisms, and yeah. you pick up on the rhythm yeah. and the intonation of spoken English. Okay, the episode recommends starting with subtitles, mm -hmm. but then gradually weaning yourself off them. It's a great approach. Yeah. Subtitles can help you follow along. Especially as a beginner. Especially as a beginner. Yeah. But as you get more comfortable, mm -hmm. challenge yourself to turn them off. Okay. And just focus on the listening. Wow. Your brain will start working harder. Yeah. To figure out the meaning. Okay. And you'll be surprised how quickly you improve. That's encouraging. It is. The episode also says, don't stress about understanding every single word. Oh, no. Just focus on getting the gist. Yeah, the main idea. Yeah. Because honestly, when we listen to our native language, uh -huh. we don't process every single word. We rely on the context, yeah. tone of voice, uh -huh. body language to fill in those gaps. We do the same thing when we're learning a new language. It's the same thing. It's like training your ear. Exactly. To pick up on those cues. Yes. And then infer the meaning from the context. It's like a mental workout. Yeah, for your listening comprehension. Exactly. One way to challenge yourself is to use an English to English dictionary. Oh, that's a good one. Right. Instead of translating immediately, yeah. you have to think in English mm -hmm. and understand the definition from the context. It's a good challenge. It is. It's like a mental workout. It is. For those English comprehension muscles. I like that. Yeah. And speaking of workouts, English has its own rhythm and intonation. It does. The source suggests really listening for that uh -huh. and trying to replicate it when you speak. It's like learning a new dance. Uh. At first, it might feel awkward. Yeah. But with practice, you start to flow with the music. I love that analogy. Yeah. Before we move on to mindset, okay. I want to highlight one more point okay. from this section. Yeah. Guess words while you're reading. Oh, that's an excellent way to build your vocabulary. Okay. And your reading comprehension at the same time. Makes sense. By actively engaging with the text yeah. and trying to figure out the meaning, uh -huh. you make the learning process so much more active okay. and memorable. So don't just passively read. No. Challenge yourself Ooh. to figure out those words. It's a fantastic habit to cultivate yeah. for any language learner. All right, now let's shift gears a bit. Okay. And talk about mindset. Sounds good. And consistency. Right. For language nice. learning. Yes. 
Welcome back to our deep dive, everyone. I feel like we're building this roadmap to fluency. Yes, one step at a time. And speaking of steps, what's next? Well, the episode takes a fun turn here. Okay. It suggests using music. Music. Yes. Now that sounds like fun. It is. It's a simple yet effective technique. It recommends singing along to oh. your favorite English songs. Have you ever tried that? Oh, of course. Me too. Yeah. I do it naturally, even if my pronunciation isn't perfect. All right. I just find it so catchy. Yeah, and in engaging. Yeah, exactly. Well, it's fascinating yeah. how rhythm and melody play a role well. in language acquisition. Okay. Think about how kids learn their first language. Yeah. It's often through songs and rhymes. That's true. When you sing, you're not just memorizing words. Right. You're internalizing the rhythm, yeah. the intonation, the pronunciation. You're feeling it. In a way that feels natural and enjoyable. I love that. And the best part is you can do it anywhere. Absolutely. Anytime. No textbooks required. You got it. Okay. So speaking of tools, the episode brings up flashcards. Oh, yes, the classic flashcard. Yeah, I remember those from school. Yeah, me too. The episode suggests writing a new word on one side. Yeah. And then a sentence using that word on the other side. So you can review them throughout the day. It's like a portable vocabulary booster. It is, exactly. I like it. It's simple but effective yeah. for reinforcing what you've learned Yeah. and making it a part of your daily routine. I like to think about those little pockets of downtime, mm -hmm. waiting for the bus. Standing in line. Standing in line at the grocery store okay. to pull out your flashcards. You got it. It's like turning those little moments into mini language lessons. Exactly. Love it. Now we come to a section I find really interesting. Okay. Mindset and consistency. Ooh, this feels important. It is, this is the heart of it. It is, yeah. Building those habits for long-term success. I'm ready. The episode stresses yeah. that it's not about sporadic bursts of effort, okay, but about consistent daily action. So like the difference between going for a run once a month yes. versus taking a brisk walk every day. Exactly. I like that consistency over intensity. Yes. Small efforts compound over time. Me too. And you build momentum. Okay. Which leads to breakthroughs. I love that. So it's about making language learning yeah. part of your life in a sustainable way. Not overwhelming yourself. Right. And that brings us to another key point. It's okay. Find joy in the process. Ooh, yes. If it feels like a chore, yes. you're not going to stick with it. You're not. So how can we make language learning more enjoyable? Well, it depends what you're interested in. Okay. Do you like podcasts? I do. Find one in English on a topic you love. Great idea. Are you a movie buff? Sometimes. Watch your favorite movies yeah. with English subtitles. Okay. Do you like to cook? Yeah. Try following a recipe in English. Ooh, that's a fun one. The key is to do something you enjoy. Yeah. And find a way to incorporate English. To bring those two together. Exactly. I like that. Make it part of your lifestyle, yeah. not another item on your to-do list. Exactly. And the episode also mentions rewards. Oh, yes. Don't forget those. Yeah. Set small rewards um. for yourself. When you reach certain milestones. It's like gamifying the process. I like that. Learn 10 new words. Yeah. Treat yourself to a coffee. Okay. Finish a chapter in an English book. Uh-huh. Go for a walk in nature. Celebrate those small wins. Exactly. It's really motivating. It is. It keeps you going. Okay. I'm feeling inspired. I'm glad. So how about we level up oh. and look at some more advanced techniques? All right. Let's do it. Okay. So the episode introduces this idea of mnemonics. Oh, yeah. Creating those memorable associations. Yeah. To remember those tricky words. To make them stick. Mnemonics. Those are so helpful. They are. I remember using those to memorize things in school. Absolutely. Can you give us an example for language learning? Of course. Okay. Let's say you're trying to remember the word melancholy. Oh. It means like a feeling of pensive sadness. Okay. You could create a mnemonic like no. Melancholic Mary mourns on Monday. Oh, I like that. The alliteration and the imagery create this vivid association. Right, it helps you remember. Yeah, it makes the word easier to remember. That's so clever. I'm going to start using that. I'm glad. Okay, what else? The episode also suggests a translation exercise. Okay. Where you write sentences in both English and your native language. Oh, okay. And then try translating back and forth. That's interesting. It's a great way to engage with the language yeah. and see if there are gaps. Okay. In your understanding. And then you can work on those. 
Exactly. It also helps you appreciate mm -hmm. the nuances of both languages oh. and how they differ yeah. in structure and expression. It's like a mental workout for your language skills. It is. It is grammar is important. Yes. But vocabulary is the foundation. Okay of communication. I see. It's like the bricks and mortar of a house. Oh. You can't build anything meaningful yeah. without that solid foundation of words. I love that analogy. Grammar is the framework. Yes. But vocabulary is the substance. Exactly. You need both. You do. But the words are key. And the more words you know, yeah. the better you can express yourself. Even if the grammar isn't perfect. Even if it's not perfect. It's about shifting the focus from perfection yes. to expression. Exactly. Because that's what language is about. It is. Connecting with others mm -hmm. and sharing our thoughts and feelings. It's about communication. Yes. So as we wrap up this section, yeah. what are some takeaways that stand out to you? What really stands out to me is this idea of making language learning a joyful experience. Yes. An integrated part of life. I agree. It's not about memorizing rules. No. It's about having fun. It is. And finding ways to make it sustainable. I couldn't agree more. It's about shifting our mindset. Yes. From seeing it as a chore uh -huh. to seeing it as a rewarding experience. I love that. Yeah. I'm excited to see what else we uncover in this episode. Me too. Let's keep going. All right. Back for the final stretch, this deep dive into these 31 tips. It's been quite a journey. It really has. And I feel like we've already learned so much. We have, but there's still some great stuff ahead. Well, let's not waste any time. Okay, let's jump in. What's up next? Well, the episode emphasizes something that's often overlooked. Oh, really? What's that? Speaking out loud. You know, it's funny. No. We can forget about the simplest things sometimes. We do. It's easy to get so caught up in the reading and the listening. Right. That we forget to actually use our voices. It's true. The episode stresses that it's not enough to passively absorb information. Okay. We need to actually engage with the language. By speaking it. By speaking right. it out loud. It's like reading about how to play an instrument. Yes. Versus actually picking it up and practicing. Exactly. You can read all the theory you want. Yeah. But until you start playing those notes, mm -hmm. you're not truly learning. That's a great point. And speaking out loud, it goes beyond just pronunciation. Oh, really? Yeah. It actually improves memory. Oh, wow. And confidence. Okay, I can see. It. When I try to explain something out loud, mm -hmm. it makes me think about what I'm saying right. and organize my thoughts. Right. So okay. it's like speaking out loud mm -hmm. solidifies the information. It does. It's like it makes it stick. Exactly. And it engages multiple senses. Nah. So it makes the learning more active and memorable. Okay. That makes sense. And when it comes to confidence, yeah. there's no better feeling. Than being able to express yourself. Yes. Fluently in a new language. That's awesome. It's a feeling of accomplishment. Yeah. And empowerment. Like riding a bike without training wheels. Exactly. That feeling of freedom. Yes. Okay. Speaking out loud is key. It is. What else does this episode highlight? Well, it circles back to a point we made earlier. Okay. Vocabulary over grammar rules. Yes. I remember that. Yeah, sometimes I get so caught up in the grammar. Me too. I forget about the words themselves. It's true. Which is kind of backwards, right? It is because grammar is important. It is. But vocabulary is the foundation. It's the foundation of communication. I see. So grammar is like the framework. Yes. And vocabulary is the substance. You need both. You do. Yeah. But the more words you know, yeah. the better you can express yourself. Even if your grammar isn't perfect. Even if it's not perfect, it's like having more colors to paint with. I love that. That's a great way to put it. So it's not about perfection. Yeah. It's about expression. Because language is all about connecting with others. It is. And sharing our thoughts and feelings. Exactly. So as we wrap up this entire deep dive, yes. what are some final thoughts that stand out to you? Well, I think what's really important is to make language learning joyful. Yes. Make it an integrated part of your life. Not a chore. Not a chore, exactly. And for all of our listeners out there. Yes. We have a challenge for you. Okay. Choose just three tips. From this episode. Yeah, that really resonated with you. Uh-huh. And commit to implementing them today. That's it. It could be something as simple as reading for 10 minutes. Or learning a few new words. Or even talking to yourself in English. You got it. The key is to take action. Take action. What do you say? Are you up for the challenge? I think so. Awesome. Well, that's it for our deep dive into the world of English speaking tips. We hope you enjoyed it. We hope you learned something new. And we hope you feel inspired. To take your English skills to the next level. Until next time. Happy learning, everyone.